What's up guys, welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. When we last left off, we uh, met these two uh, fine individuals. And uh, we learned that we had a heart condition. So that's changed our life forever. But uh, let's go back to um, the world of uh, Katawa Shoujo. Let's go do something real quick. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few gestures with her hands. Whoa. Those are some fast gestures. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I started to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying that things... Saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little confused, right? But I understand you would... Why would you think I was Shichan? Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She said it's nice to meet you too. Dot dot dot. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course he is. If he was, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right? Oh, I'm gonna not like this person at all. He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you'd be here today so soon, Shichan, right? Hichan, as a he, as a Hichan, or Hichan, whatever. Yep, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits. You look just like I imagined. She reminds me of one of my friends I have. Oh, she's a snotty anime chick, isn't she? Ha 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 ha! Yeah, you look just like a Hichan. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Dot dot dot. Hakimichi taps her finger on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly. Their hands are blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. Ah, uh, er, sorry about that. Shichan wants, wants you to know that she's a class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with yourself with it. I literally just got here. All I saw was the front door, the front gate, I remember. Then we saw like the front building, we came in and met Muto. It was like, hey, you gotta go to class and introduce yourself to everyone. So no, I don't know the school. He just stumbles with a hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Thanks, that would be pretty helpful. Yeah, it just kind of came straight to class today. See? Exactly. I just recapped his life. I remember everything. Dot dot dot. Is she mad at me? Ha ha ha. That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not, with, not just with school, either. Always. Even as a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shichan? Ha ha ha. Oh boy. Learn about where you're going. I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half-assedly, but anyway. I don't say anything, and Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like, it's, it, seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat, both of them are smiling. But that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. Look, you look down. Are you okay? Dot, dot, dot. Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Yep, I'm not gonna like this chick at all. Asking for help is perfectly normal as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. Wah Oh gosh, he's an evil villain. Alright. Dot dot dot. Ah, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakimichi or Class Rip all the time. Just call her Shichan. Dot, dot, dot. Why'd the music stop? Just you know, I have popcorn like right over here. You can't see it. I'll bring it up to the webcam. I'll show it. I have popcorn. I'm not gonna eat it. Very tempted to. If you want to, if you want to win, to win away to my heart, you just take me to a movie and we get popcorn. Because I love movies and I love popcorn. Haha. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Dot dot dot. Yep, yep, Shizune is fine. 
Okay. Okay, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assume would be all business. Well, she still seems like that, just less so, I guess. Dot dot dot. Huh? Oh right, you haven't even touched the assignment. You should start work now, or should Shao get mad? The assignment is kind of long, so we should start it now. We want to finish it before the before the end of, before the end of class. Haha, <laughs> that too. Dot dot dot. Shinning glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. Dot dot dot. After class, we can take a walk around the gr grounds. Gr I thought I said, somebody that said girls. It's because there's two girls in front and I can't talk. Around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The time is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Do you guys homework for me in general? Still, we finish it a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class. Despite our latest start, Shizuni and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as he. As she, I can't read. As she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish. Not to mention a little more easily distracted. Yep, she does something in front of mine. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. I love that classic bell sound people use. It's awesome. The clock tower bells ring, sign signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. That painting. What? What is it? Like this right? Oh, I didn't read it. Uh, hang on. I got. There's like controls. How do you? How do you? How do you? How do you go back? Whatever. We descend even below the lobby where I met where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in this school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in, contra in contrast to the classic exterior. It's big. There's people talking in the background. Excuse me, I am trying to read a story. You guys are getting in the way. It's big. It's big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. Oh boy, it's the cafeteria. An enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care what, so we proceed to the line. There's a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice! It almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet, this need of, uh, to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random and follow Shizune to the table, sitting opposite of her. Yeah, don't do that! Don't pick food randomly, because you might grab something you hate, and then you're like, oh, we're not going to eat it, just throw it away, and... See? As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, see right there, like I just said. Like, just look. Misha pokes me to the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. Dot, dot, dot. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite. Do you want to know something? What? About anything. We are guys, so you should ask if there is something. Hmm. I wonder. Oh. 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 Oh boy. Um. Well. <sighs> I hate decisions. This is like every like, game I play that decision. Like, choose the evil option or the good option. I always choose the good option no matter what. You know, I'm not gonna ask where a death is because maybe she doesn't want to talk about it. I mean, you know what? I remember he likes libraries, so I'm gonna ask about the library. Oh yeah, is there a library in the school? Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile like, Oh really? Come on! There is! It's in the second floor, we can show it to you sometime. Thanks. Return to my food when the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very an animatedly, throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. Oh boy. Dot dot dot. I quickly notice the conversation and sign is not enough to fill a silence. 
We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. That dark-haired girl I noticed before is thumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little and Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning to stone just from our presence. Misha and Shizuna either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom is solely filled with other students and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange, it's as if my brain remembers how this is done but my body doesn't. Oh, you've been in the hospital for a couple of months, I understand. Towards the end of class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. Dude, I do that every period in school. I'm like literally yawning every day, looking at the clock like, oh man, gotta get out of here. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Nope. You shouldn't be that tired. Maybe it's a long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I mean, feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. Freedom! School is finally over for the day. Yeah, for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizuna are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Well, oh, come on, please no. Dot dot dot. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, he chan. You have to, you gotta hurry already since there's a lot of work for us to do. Dot dot dot. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Ah, oh, wait, the teacher said I had to see the mirrors. Where do I, where do I have to go? Yes, so, we can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own buildings, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students marking, marking, making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. We have a senior in high school? When we get outside, the girls make their way to a smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually a part of the main building. Dot dot dot. This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official important stuff inside. Oh. Very descriptive, aren't we? Like the Yamaka Foundation office and all the nurses' office. They even have a swimming pool. Swimming pool! How is that official? Yeah. <laughs> official swimming pool's official. Dot 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 dot. Why she was mad at me? Don't be silly, Hitchon. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse office is on the first floor. Oh, she has a finger thing. She's like, uh huh. This is what you gotta do. I'm like, okay, really? You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walked in hoping this really would be only a quick visit, like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text, Head Nurse, and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. Old doctor's offices smell strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his, on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings laying around on the desk. No. This guy's hopped up on something. Hello there, what can I do for you today? He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash an impression away when he smiles. Um, are you the nurse? He smells like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. I mean, you know, doctor's coat. You're in a uh, room that's called the head nurse's office. Why, yes I am. It says so in the door. No. Do you call me by my name or just the nurse like everyone else? Now, of course, I shake off my confusion and realize I probably should just grab his extended hand. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right. Uh, I'm a new student and my homeroom teacher told me to come in and meet you. My name is Hisao Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Nakai. I was just reading your file in the morning. Why do I have one eye open? Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related cognitive heart muscle deficiency, right? 
He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Uh, yes. Good, well, you're, well you've probably been briefed about the schooling now, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone for my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there's a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. Oh, thank God. The show feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. You'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now let me let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles back stacks of papers around, I let my I left my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic. I, it's the epitome of generic. I'd like to say, beige walls and ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times a day from all the food groups. Uh, those things again. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. Is my file that big? Jesus. So you already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take pills every morning and evening or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Well, does a guy laugh at his own jokes too? I find that annoying. Um, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid we're going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least for the time being. <laughs> I was up front. Yeah, you, you can't play sports anymore. You... Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did out of... I guess I never did it out of bring passion to the sport just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking another heart attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There is no mention of the cause in your papers. Uh, not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. That's serious? It still looks like he's the same. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so you, so some exercise would do you, so do you do. Blah, I couldn't read. You got physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe. There's a, there's a pool here. So I was told. You were? Very good. Anyway, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his fingers to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Quick drink, real quick. Probably shouldn't move the mic away from my mouth. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and sits them on the desk, obviously content. Good. That's it then. Come meet me if you ever need anything. Hopefully it'll be don't, because you're really not the type of guy I want to meet every day in my life. Mush it out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building, and although to my eyes, they still look one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. This all sounds cool. It's pretty cool. Everyone seems to know where they're going, and I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Pick the judge, aren't they? Does that make me one of them? One of us? Dot, dot, dot. And I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness of me, the weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms, shrubbery, flowers, and that overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. 
The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. And it takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the ends of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nod and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that one of the girls around here is sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. Ha, <laughs> ladies man. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small quarters branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and shower as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The name plates on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us, two of us here. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Hello? Is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few moments and the clicking of, a, of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. Something telling me this guy's gonna weird me out a lot. Eh, song's already there. Yep, I'm gonna get weirded out and not like this guy. A bespectacled boy is standing in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently. There was extremely thick eyeglasses. <laughs> bespectacled hallmate. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have glasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. Wario? A scarf, by the way. His sound a guy. I'm moving into the room and moving into the next room. I thought I would introduce I, I thought I should introduce my His face suddenly brightens in realization and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand at a smiling greeting almost straight to my dis dive die never mind, diaphragm. Oh sup dude. The name's Kanji. I almost said Kanji, but it's Kenji. Uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and then in a welcome. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Your parents, you sure? Because there could have been some other people too. You can't just a book by its cover. Yep, I don't let this guy already. Is that a place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond? Yeah, I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, so. Me, I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Oh. So you're a douche. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you like? I hope not. What do you like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white, white linen, a Desk made of some type of light wood, mostly curtains. It's no one's rooms in personal, like my hospital room. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they, than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. It also seems there are a number of school uniforms hanging, the, hanging there as well. I notice painted the sleeve on one of the shirts. Hi, John. Oh, my parents call me that. You've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Is that, well, at least I don't know I have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hope I would have, and there'd be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something. But I had nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I had nothing, have nothing to do. 
The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day today, it's too. I still am, I think. Damn. I have to distract myself somehow so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... The bottles of medication is neatly arranged on my night ta table catch my eye. Pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside and then read the glued on pharmacy label. The sound of God. Two tablets daily to stay alive. Oh. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure doctors can't put that as a label because that's really messed up. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. Well, never mind then. It's kind of twisted having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? Bottoms up. I decided to begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. Again, bottoms up. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain, and after that I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. I don't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm, and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up on my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. Next day, transition, dun dun dun, dun dun dun. Wakey wakey, eggs and bakey. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed it's me who was supposed to be the one living here. My bag's on the floor, my new school book's on the desk, my numerous medication on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down on the chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one, a natural one. It feels like a school uniform as it should. It's not much different from what I used to be wearing before. I mean, I have to wear a school uniform. You get used to it literally after like the first couple of days of school, especially when I was a freshman. I had to get used to it really fast. That goes for other things too. So far this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday, which is constant laughter and she's doing a sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs, and if so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decided to ask Tune about it and explain the groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. She crosses her arms and shits. What the hell kind of face is that? And shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. Dot dot dot. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sean. Is there something you want from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, here, Sean. My first thought that that. It, is that mean she doesn't know what is, which is worrying? Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. 
dot dot dot. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are a lot of school events like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with the doing whatever. So, you actually transferred in, in at a busy time. Maybe you can help out, too. Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. Waha, I don't know hey child. The truth is, it's a local event. I'm not from this area, so... I'm gonna stop soon, but uh, she starts sighing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glass at the end of an oddly grandiose floor and starts signing hard and heavy. Dot dot dot. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words out at me with a disappropriate amount of pride. Too loud. You can see he heads turning to look in that direction. Not so loud. Dot dot dot. I mean, bees evolve with new generation. With each new generation, the ideas and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time. Dot dot dot, with an exclamation point. Now it's about delicious fried. Oh, I should probably read this correctly. Now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. Ha 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 ha. The teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Alright, I'm gonna call it here because it's been 30 minutes. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, see you all in the next part of Katawa Shoujo. See you all then.